In this video lesson, we're going to introduce a very simple but important strategy called proportional reasoning. You may hear other teachers refer to this as dimensional analysis or factor labeling, particularly in a science or a chemistry class. In Math 10, this topic is very important to us because the chapter one of this course is all about measurement in all different kinds of units, and proportional reasoning is a simple strategy to convert between different units of measurement. The strategy gets its name from the idea of proportions, which are another word for fractions, and this method uses one or more fractions that express known relationship between different units. In our course, these relationships generally come from our formula sheet. In the fractions that we create, the units that you are trying to move away from, or the units that you already have, go into the denominator or the bottom of the fraction. The units that you want to go towards go in the numerator or the top of the fraction. And we keep in mind that we can use more than one fraction if it's needed to help with our unit conversions. This strategy is pretty straightforward. When you start the question, you have a number in some kind of unit measurement. Let's say you're measuring in A's. And at the end of the question, you want a measurement that's equal to what you started with, but now it's going to be measured in unit B, so it's going to be a different number. To make our conversion, we look at our formula sheet and we find a relationship that connects A and B, and you fill in those numbers from the formula sheet, keeping in mind that the units you want to end up with go in the numerator or the top part of the fraction, and the units that you want to get rid of go in the denominator or the bottom part of the fraction. From here, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to multiply our starting number with that fraction. As another reminder, when we multiply by a fraction, you'll multiply by the numerator, the top number, and the symbol in the fraction represents division, so we're actually going to divide by that bottom number. And when we perform that calculation, it will help us with our conversion. So here's a simple example to begin with. If we're going to convert 5.1 meters to centimeters, the units that I want to get rid of are meters, and the units that I want to keep are centimeters. So we look at our formula sheet, or in this case, rely on our understanding of the metric system, to fill in that one centimeter means the same thing as one meter. Now, on our calculators, we would type 5.1 multiplied by 100, dividing by 1, or you can skip the dividing by 1 since we know it won't change anything, and we find out this is equal to 510 centimeters. Now let's say we want to convert 30 days to hours. We're going to use a known relationship again. We want to put days into the denominator of the fraction and hours into the numerator. And we know that one day is equal to 24 hours. Now I can use my calculator to find out, in this case, that 30 days is equal to exactly 720 hours. Now let's imagine for a minute the question didn't want days, but wanted minutes. We can use our proportional reasoning here, and in fact, we can do all of this in a single step. We can convert our 30 days, perhaps not directly into minutes, but still use our understanding that one day is equal to 24 hours, and then apply our knowledge that there are 60 minutes in every one hour. We double check that the units we started out with show up in the denominator of the fraction and that our midway units show up in the denominator of another fraction. Now we can type this entire string of multiplication and division into our calculators to find out that 30 days is 43,200 minutes. In our last example we're going to convert 19,000 300 feet to the nearest tenth of a mile. We have feet. As a midway step, we'll work toward yards. We know that one yard is equal to three feet. Next, we're going to convert our yards into miles. We know that there is one mile for every 1,760 yards. A quick bit of typing with our calculator, and we find out that this is approximately 3.66 miles. However, 
the question wants us to round to the nearest tenth of a mile. We're going to be rounding off that last six, and so we are rounding up, and we will say that this is equal to about 3.7 miles. Remember that the goal here is to be able to correctly and efficiently convert between different units of measurement. And that's so that we can complete unit conversions as part of larger problems involving perimeter, area, or volume. Also, this strategy is going to be very helpful for us near the end of the year when we're performing concurrency conversions.